welcome to Five for Design this week. I'm Miss B. And I'm Glenny D. I'm so sorry I missed you last week. I was off on a mountain biking adventure and boy did I have a good time. So good to have holidays. So I hope you've all had great holidays and that you have been back designing with Glenny D last week. And what are we going to be doing this week, Glenny D? This week we're working on something really fundamental. We're giving you some more practice at drawing cubes and cylinders because this is not a cube, but it started off as a cube and then it got stretched. So just like many sports involve you running and throwing a ball, well, with drawing and designing, the fundamentals are a cube and a cylinder, Miss B. Yeah, I've got to say, I really love my mascara. I think it's a cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's so many things if you think about cubes and cylinders in everyday products. In fact, it'd be a really good treasure hunt to do, wouldn't it? Like a scavenger hunt. To that's find a great it. idea, Miss mm, B. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that's another time. Let's not go on a scavenger hunt right now. Let's get into this week's Five for Design. Uh, and something that I, I do want to um, share with everyone is that this week is getting harder and that's okay, right? It's okay that you find this hard. That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. It means that you're getting a challenge out of it. And so we just say, keep trying and keep practicing and you can do this freehand or you can use your splat 3d tool yeah so your splat 3d tool yep. so if you're feeling like you need um a little bit more practice you might want to go back to your splat or start with your splat if you find it difficult or if you're finding it easier then we're going to give you the freehand challenge so have a great week everyone i can't wait to see what you do okay let's get started let's get started Week 8 Lessons. Here's a look ahead at the week's activities. We'll be drawing vertical cylinders, horizontal cylinders, isometric angle cylinders, then we'll be joining cylinders to cubes. That's a really fundamental skill which allows us to draw a camera in 3D. Let's go old school. Friday Fun Challenge, we'll be drawing cubes, cylinders and then in groups cutting them out and pasting them stack, stack, stack. I can't wait, let's get started. Day one. Let's warm up by tracing around and around and around the ellipse. Just trace lightly. Then let's try drawing half an ellipse at the bottom. Try several times and then try drawing a full ellipse and see which you find easier. The full ellipse means you'll need to grab your eraser and take off the part that's hidden. Cool, now we'll draw in the sides and we have our first cylinder, a vertical cylinder. Notice the two little dots on your page. That's to help you draw a centre line right through the cylinder. This line is called the long axis of an ellipse. It's like the axis of symmetry for an ellipse. So we're working backwards. Let's imagine there's nothing on the page and we draw a centre line first. Next, we decide how high we want our cylinder. So we draw one axis and then another one. That's how high or long you want your cylinder. So on the first axis, long axis, we draw an ellipse and then a second. Which leaves us now to join the sides and there's our cylinder. We should be drawing really lightly um, and if so, now I'm going to try to uh, tidy it up a little more with my dark or firm line. Let's finish with the sides. And there's a vertical cylinder. We did it. What can we make using this cylinder? What about a salt shaker? Next, let's pretend for a second that we're drawing with no help at all. First, we draw a centre line. Next, we put a mark somewhere on that line where we want our ellipse to be, and we draw our long axis. A few marks show me how wide I'm planning to draw the ellipse. Then I'd go ahead and draw in the ellipse. See how you go. Finally, I'm drawing another ellipse on the inside. That's like a hole. So for the bottom, 
We need to decide how long we want the cylinder and then we draw the half at the bottom. Great, so drawing the sides, hopefully you've drawn that nice and lightly and that allows you to darken it in and tidy it up. Cool. So notice there's two more dots that we can use to draw a center line. We are totally on our own here. Let's draw our two long axes. Plan how wide we want to draw our ellipses. There's some marks. Now I'm going to draw my first full ellipse. But on the second one, the second um, axis further down here, I'm going to draw just half an ellipse. That saves me a little bit of erasing. So draw in your sides. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit rough, because remember we get a chance to tidy it up with our firm lines. Excellent. Can't wait to see that. What can we draw using this cylinder? How about one of those weird mirrors that bends the reflection of the viewer? This is how it looks drawing a vertical cylinder using the Splat 3D tool. That's the lesson for today. Great, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm Glenny D. Bye for now. Hi, Glenny D. All this week we're drawing cylinders. Last lesson we drew vertical cylinders, straight up and down. And today we're beginning with horizontal cylinders. A center line runs along the whole length of the cylinder. The long axis is where we draw the ellipses. It crosses at 90 degrees to the center line. Trace over these lines lightly for some practice. Then start with the center line. Draw the two long axes. And on those we draw a full ellipse. And down the other end we'll draw a half ellipse. Now we draw the sides in and we've sketched up a horizontal cylinder. What could this cylinder be? I know, here's some metal rod and a handle. It's a paint roller. <laughs> Number two, let's warm up again. Try using light lines. And after you've sketched it in lightly, you come back and firm it in with a nice neat line. Try drawing a smaller one. Notice how we're seeing one end of the cylinder and on the lower one we're seeing the other end. Here's how it looks using the Splat 3D drawing tool. Starting with your centre line leaning over on the same angle as the bird's foot makes an isometric cylinder. We draw them exactly the same way. Start with a mark, then at 90 degrees or straight across, draw a long axis. Decide how long you want the cylinder, and then make a second axis. Great, now let's trace over an ellipse, and at the far end we draw just half an ellipse. Great, let's have a go at darkening that in now that you've drawn your sides. And now on the other bird's foot angle we draw a centre line and a starting and ending mark. That's how long the cylinder is. We mark in our axis and on those axis we sketch in lightly uh, an ellipse. At the far end I'm doing a full ellipse as well. That doesn't matter because I'm going to darken in over my construction lines. Cool. What could these two cylinders become? If I join them with a small and a long curve, we've drawn an elbow. Could be a join in a pipe. If you're drawing just from scratch on paper, it's just as easy. Start with your bird's foot, your long axis, draw lightly and then firm in. Excellent. That's all for day two. Well done, everybody. See you tomorrow. Hi, everyone, and welcome to an awesome day three. Last lesson, we learnt to draw cylinders on the isometric slope. 
or angle. Alex, the axis is showing us here that we can actually use three angles for drawing cylinders. Um, looking back, we've already used these angles for drawing cubes. It's the same angles as the bird's foot. We're adding the Z angle, the straight up and down. All right, cool. So today we are going to draw cylinders on all three angles. Here's um, a look ahead for those using the splat. Here's how it looks sliding the splat on the different angles. You ready? Sliding it in that way and then the X direction and now sliding it up the Z direction. Easy. Hey, let's attach cylinders in three directions. Begin with a center line. I'm doing the Z direction first, then how long I want the cylinder and sketch in your ellipses and finish off with the sides. Great, now the Y direction, center line, length, long axis, ellipses, and sides. Here's the X direction, a center line, length, axis, ellipses. And finally, we'll darken that in. Well done, you're amazing. If you're drawing from scratch, then quickly draw a cube, choose the direction of your first cylinder, and then sketch a center line. Next is to mark how long we want the cylinder, and then it's the same process. So that's how it would look if you're drawing from scratch. Add a bit of color, tidy up your lines, and done. Imagine Dr. Evil has asked you to design the mega switch for the death ray. Um, this drawing is using nothing but cylinders and uh, a cube and a sort of squashed cube. So it's using just the three isometric angles plus cylinders. That's all for today. I'm Glenny D. I'll see you tomorrow for day four. Hi, thanks for joining me for day four lessons. Last lesson, we attached cylinders on three different directions and we call those X, Y, Z. Today, we're drawing a camera. We'll be starting with a bird's foot. Notice the bird's foot really is just those three angles, the Alex, the axis angles. So quickly sketch up a cube and then extend the cube with three lines draw in the far edges. On that line, place a mark halfway and all the others. So join those up and we've divided our camera body in half. Now for the lens, it's going to be a cylinder we'll attach in the middle. So place a mark in the middle of that line. Now what angle we used? I think we'll choose the Y axis. So from our starting point, extend the line out in the Y direction. And um, then we're going to add our long axis. Remember, they go at 90 degrees across. And then draw in your ellipse. Draw a same size ellipse a bit further out and then join with two sides. My goodness, we're nearly there. Add some dials or buttons on top. Notice when I'm drawing these ellipses in, the long axis line is horizontal or flat. Drawing a line that divides the white from the pink area. And here's some more design detail. Change the buttons into dials by adding a second ellipse if you want to. This is a tricky detail. You don't need it, but if you want to have a go, add the little bump. And now leaving our construction lines, we firm or darken in our finished drawing. I'm going to add a dark line right around the outside. Remember, that's our cutting line. And any of the detail inside the camera should be a thinner or a lighter line. Excellent. Let's add a little bit of color now. 
and I think we've done a pretty good job. Uh, so guys, that's all for today. I will see you tomorrow for the fabulous Fab Friday Challenge. See you then. Bye. Hi, welcome to the Friday Fun Challenge. Every student is going to need some blank paper and draw a five centimeter, roughly, uh, cube, and then we're going to color the cube. So each student will draw one cube and then draw one cylinder. Here's how you measure the cylinder. Start off with a center line and place your long axis five centimeters apart. And on those axes, sketch your ellipses. You choose the size. Let's join those up. And finally, we'll tidy those up with some outlines and add some color. Great. Now, your challenge today is to combine your parts as a group and then stack your parts one on top of the other. I suggest don't glue them for a start, play around with some designs and then stick them down. Notice how the red is overlapping in front of the green. That's why you wouldn't stick the red down first. So have fun with this challenge and come up with some original shapes, some compositions, collage, uh, knock yourself out and add some bright colors, add your team name down the bottom, and I would love to see some of your designs. Thanks for this week. It's been a blast. I'm Glennie D. See you next week.